Hello to the Global Privacy Assembly. My name is Ryan Kahlo, and I am a law professor and information scientist at the University of Washington. I also serve as an expert panel reviewer for privacy complaints at the World Bank. Today I'm going to talk about how artificial intelligence implicates privacy. And I see three ways, at least, that AI implicates privacy. Um, and I think that they are increasingly, that is to say, each one is harder to deal with than the last. So the first one is well understood, which is that AI empowers surveillance. Things that would not have been possible prior to AI, facial recognition, uh, recognizing certain kinds of um, uh, confessions in large text, analyzing records, this sort of thing would have in the past taken a lot of people hours in order to sift through information, but AI being so good at spotting patterns is able to um, make surveillance cheaper, faster, easier, and hence to scale surveillance up. And that's well understood. Um, a second issue though is that artificial intelligence is increasingly able to derive the intimate from the available. What I mean by that is that you might be putting things out into the world on social media, you know, on some app. You might be perfectly comfortable sharing certain information about yourself with other people, with corporations, with the government, because you don't think of it as being particularly sensitive. But what AI is increasingly able to do is to take seemingly innocuous information and associate it with things that are much, much more sensitive. So you might just be talking um, uh, on Twitter uh, about your day, and the system may be able to derive something about a health condition you have. For example, researchers a few years ago were able to tell with high degrees of accuracy which people were suffering from postpartum depression based solely on their Twitter content, which did not mention depression or even necessarily pregnancy. So that's a big issue because so many laws in the United States and abroad draw distinctions between personal and impersonal information or non-personal, sensitive and non-sensitive information, private or public information, right? And so if AI can derive personal information from non or sensitive information from normal, or uh, private information from public, well, those distinctions that the law relies upon uh, will break down. The last and hardest problem to me is the fact that as AI agents become more popular, things like chat and smart assistants like Alexa um, become more popular, I'm worried about the way that people are hardwired to react to anthropomorphic technology like AI as though a person were really present. So what I mean by that is, people need, as Alan Weston said, moments off stage. We need to feel like we're alone, we need solitude. But if all of our technology, our phones, our cars, our homes, have an anthropomorphic social presence all the time, when do we ever feel like we're by ourselves? Or if we're looking for information, and in the past we could just type something into a text box and get a bunch of links, now we're having a conversation with something that feels like a person to us. You know, it's like going to uh, Google to find out um, about your disease that you have versus going to a physical librarian and asking them. Um, how will people be able to explore the world and feel comfortable when they're doing so by interacting with what feels to us like a social agent? Um, and so those are the three ways, the three challenges I see for AI and privacy on the horizon, that it makes um, artificial intelligence much more powerful and easier and faster, um, that um, AI begins to break down the difference between um, uh, sensitive and non-sensitive information or public and private information by being able to derive the intimate from the available, and finally, that AI-powered social agents will make us feel like we're never alone and that we always have to go through a person in order to discover even embarrassing things about the world. Um, so I leave it to you to address those challenges on, uh, on the global and individual state level. Um, but again, I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for inviting me. I wish I could be there in person.